So today we're going to discover what is the basic syntax for writing HTML. Don't let this intimidate you, it's actually pretty simple. I'm in Sublime Text right now. I encourage you to be in either Sublime Text or Notepad++, whatever you have on your computer. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start writing HTML page. We're going to in, I've got index.html selected here. I'm going to get rid of this dummy text right now. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get used to these keys, these brackets. There's open and then there's closed. These keys are located in to the right of the M key. And get used to using these because you're going to use them a lot. Almost all the code inside a .html page, you use these keys. The first piece of code that we're going to write is going to look like this. It starts with an exclamation mark, you write doc type, all in capital letters and then a space, and then HTML all in lowercase letters, and then you close it like that. Okay? This is called the doc type declaration, and the reason you need this at the top of your HTML document is this is what tells the web browser not only the areas in your HTML, but what kind of HTML you're using. And I know it doesn't seem like there's that much information in this. This is actually an agreed upon code that web browsers use to know that their HTML page that it's about to display is written in what's called the HTML file language. It's actually what we're going to be covering. There's different flavors of HTML available. There are different numbers and stuff like that. I'm not going to go over that. We're just going to focus on learning the basics. HTML5 is actually kind of the newest leading edge version of HTML. It's so new, it hasn't actually been completely confirmed yet. But it's just so much easier to write the doc type for HTML5. So that's what we're going to do. So there we go. That's the type of doc type declaration. I can't really say anything other than just memorize it. Because it needs to go at the top of every HTML page that you're going to write. Next we need... The rest of the page is going to be made of what's called opening and closing tags. Here I'm going to start by showing you what a tag looks like. A tag, this would be an opening tag, this would be a closing tag. There's no actual tag called tag, I'm just using this as an example. And usually stuff goes here, in the middle. Okay? You don't need any spaces. In fact, it's better when you don't leave spaces, you just have your opening tag there, and you can just go ahead and start writing your text. And once you're done, you have your closing tag. And for any of you, this might be dating myself here, but for any of you who maybe learned to use word processors back in the day when there weren't any graphical interfaces and you were using real codes, I know that's a really small percentage of you who remember that, but it's very similar to that concept when you're putting codes at the beginning of all your text on a web page. So let's have a look at some of the basic tags you need to have on every single HTML page. The first one you need, and I'm going to go whatever you type here, tags, you should always type them in pairs. They always come in pairs with a couple minor exceptions, and I'll bring those up when the time comes. But for now, just think tags come in pairs, okay? So first, and probably the most important tag, is the HTML tag. Now you're probably thinking, well, we already did that here. And I know. But this is a tag that you need to put at the beginning and ending of every single document. So the doc type declaration is not technically a tag, it's kind of its own little thing at the top. And the HTML tag, that's what encloses everything. Everything in your page. Everything goes inside there. Okay? I'm actually going to just, I'm hitting return, just to put this down here. Because I want to explain to you that you don't actually need, web browsers, they ignore all the space, all the white space. So you can have this much space, or you can have this much space. The web browser doesn't care. Everything's going to look at everything the same way. So that kind of makes life a little simpler, because you can actually space things out really nicely in a way that, you know, makes everything... Technically, you can have all this code all in one line, all at the same time. And it would make it impossible for us to understand, but it makes no difference to the computer. The computer can read it all. Okay, so we've got our HTML tag, and I've written the opening and closing tag here. I'm going to push this down because the next tag that we're going to need to show you are, there's two tags, two tag pairs here. The first one is going to be called header. And I'm actually going to erase the word everything because we don't actually want that in there. And there we go. The first one is going to be called head. 
I'm just going to write the next one, which is going to be called body. And notice I'm doing something interesting here. I'm doing what's called nesting tags. You see that? You see how like head and open head and closed head, bo open body, closed body, are staying inside the HTML tag? You're going to see a lot of that. The important thing is you've got to nest these in the right order. Once you open a tag, you've got to close it before you close any other tag. So they always have to... I couldn't close the HTML tag once I'm here and then close the body outside of that. It always has to open and close the tag first before you close the end, end closing tag. Does that make sense? Okay, so you've got HTML opening and closing everything, and you've got head and body. And I kind of explained this to my students. It might be weird. But I tell them to envision like an alien from the planet HTML, and this alien only has a head and body. Okay? If that helps you remember that when you're building an HTML page, you gotta have a head and you gotta have a body. Okay? And that's it. There's nothing else. And anyway, it's kind of weird. These two tags have very specific purposes. The stuff that goes inside the head tag is all the administrative information of the page. It's not really going to get displayed on the page. It's really just sort of stuff about the page. It's meta information. And think about that, right? It's like all the stuff in your head. It's all really just inside. It's all your consciousness and everything. So I don't know if that helps or not, but just think of it as that's where we put all the administrative information. And the body, that's where you put the good stuff. That's where you put the text and the images and the videos and the layout and all the stuff goes inside the body. So they both play very different roles. So I'm going to actually go ahead and type that out and say all the good stuff goes here. All right. And then inside the head here, I'm going to go ahead and put another tag that's very important to include, and it's called the title tag. And notice I'm nesting this one again, okay? And the title is the title of your web page. This is going to show up, and depending on the browser you're using, this is going to show up usually in the title bar. Now, you've probably seen that. You've been to a website, and there's like a name of the website. And it's in the title bar. That's what's going to show up in here. So let's go ahead, and this is the first content we're going to put in here. We're writing a coming soon page. So I'm going to do a coming soon page, Zeo Learning. I'm going to type out Zeo Learning, and I hope I'm spelling it wrong. I'm really spelling it wrong. A tech is coming soon. And that tells me that Zeo Learning is spelled incorrectly. Little do they know. Um, so this part is going to show it now. I'm going to put it between the title tags. That means it's going to show up in the web browser, but only, not actually in the browser, so, but in the title bar. It's a very special tag. And check out what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to turn this over. And the reason is that I'm doing this is just as a reminder that I've got this item nested, sorry, this item nested inside the head. And that's all we're going to put in the head for now. We're going to come back to this in a few screencasts, but for now, that's all I'm going to show you to figure out. Okay, now let's look at the body, okay? So the body is where all the good stuff is going to go. We're going to put the H1, we're going to put the headers and the paragraphs and the images and all sorts of good stuff in here. But for now, I'm just going to leave this blank, all right? I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. All right, and this is, by the way, this is where it's really going to get used to shortcuts. So the shortcut for save is just control S. So you might see me you know, just doing that very quickly. I apologize if I'm going too quickly. I want you to get used to the shortcuts. It really saves you a lot of time. So all the good stuff goes in there. I'm actually going to tab that over. And if you see how space... I'm just going to demonstrate how space doesn't matter. Web browsers don't pay attention to space. I can do this and then say, here is even more good stuff. And you'll see how the web browser is going to ignore all that space. And these are the essential parts. Entering all the stuff I typed in here. Your dark, your doc type declaration, your HTML tag, your body tag, and the title tag, inside the head tag, all nested inside here. This is the essential stuff you need to have in every single HTML page. Okay? If this is this is worth memorizing. It's just, you know, I've been writing this so much that it's just something I just remember. If you're new, it's worth memorizing the order that this goes in, or just like create a page and save it. 
This is like a blank template that you can just cut and paste and anytime you're running a new web page. But honestly, these are the basics. Everything else is just decoration at this point. It's not that hard, is it, right? And here's another thing you'll notice. You folks who are using Sublime Text, and they're using Notepad++, you notice how this is in white, okay? As whereas this stuff is in pink. This is one of the reasons I was so adamant about using a proper text editor. Sublime Text is software like Sublime or Notepad++ are built to help you write code. And this will actually color code the different parts of code for you, so that if you make a mistake like this, see what I did there? I forgot the closing bracket. See what happens? All the colors go all wonky. This is olive and olive. And then Sublime Text is going, oh, danger, danger. There's like a problem here. And I don't think this is right, so that's good, right? So now you can say, hey, I guess I messed something up. And you can go, yeah, I have to close that. And here's the bad news. You're going to get a small thing like that. It's going to screw up your code. And then so so is this. So if you do something like forget to close that, that's going to screw up your code. And accurate, ac accuracy counts. I don't need to tell you that. You really need to be careful. Things like case, like lowercase and uppercase, that counts too. All this stuff here is case sensitive. All tags have to be in lowercase. So the good news is, if you're the type of person who's really good at paying attention to detail, this is going to be awesome. You're going to fly through this. If you're the type of person who's kind of maybe a little rough, you know, doesn't pay close attention to detail, this might be a bit of a challenge for you. But hey, it's a good opportunity for you to get better at this. It's all good, okay? Last but not least, I've been talking to you about how to make this code, how to write it. I'm going to go ahead and save that again. Let's see what this looks like. I'm kind of curious as to how it looks. So here's how we do it. I'm going to go back to this folder right here. We're going to open up the folder. And what I'm going to do, and there's multiple ways to do this, I'm actually going to take this index.html file, and I'm going to drag it on top of, see down here, on top of the web browser I want to open up in. So let's say I wanted to open this up in Firefox. I open it up. And there it is, and there's the web page. And see, remember how you see right here in the title, Zeo Learning? I'm going to switch back to Firefox. There it is right up there. Okay? So it also displays up here, actually. So it displays slightly differently for different browsers, which is another reason we want to test this out in various browsers. So here's another thing. Here's the text that we put in here. It's kind of boring looking because we haven't really done anything with it. But notice how I put all the space here with all the space. The browsers are going to ignore that, okay? You need to use different techniques to put different space in your web page. So I'm going to show you how to do that. 